morning, everybody. Today I'd like to talk to you about our city, Chicago. I don't know how many of you are from here, or plan on staying here past college, or where you're from, but where we are is the mecca of the Midwest. We have nearly three million people living in this city, and we define ourselves as a city of neighborhoods. The importance of this is where you live defines you. It creates your culture, your relationships, and standing with what you're comfortable with. Everyone's proud of where they're from for how it defines them. So what we're talking about today is, like I said, gentrification. Merriam-Webster defines gentrification as the process of renewing low-income neighborhoods by bringing in middle-class and upper-class investors so to deteriorating areas that often displace poorer residents. This term was coined back in the 60s by Ruth Glass. She was a British sociologist and an urban planner. What she studied was in Britain at a time when many of the ghettos were really gritty, just in bad places, a lot of wealthy class um, Britain. Um, British residents were coming into these areas and they were redoing neighborhoods and the poor lower class were being kicked out due to rent. This has a negative connotation to it. It's from her, from her uh, definition. She was a Marxist and like I said, a sociologist. Gentry, ruling class, coming in, finding a new neighborhood. So what it does, Lower income, sorry for their gritty charm. So young professionals and investors become interested in these areas for low rent and need to repair and just excitement. These are vibrant areas like Pilsen's neighborhood or like I'll talk about later on, Wicker Park. It brings economic boom to low income neighborhoods. So the pros of this are become, there's less crime, less vacancy rates, new apartments, redefinition of the old apartments. Community attractions come as well. Parks and recreation, playgrounds and bike lanes and things that just make a community flourish. Makes access easier to visit, sets up everything. And even retail chains can come into play for convenience purposes. So this is the Wilson neighborhood up in uptown. This is the plan they're bringing in for the new C, uh, for the CTA red line. They're going to redo everything. It doesn't exactly look like this right now, but located across the block is a target that just came into the neighborhood. This is more fast paced. Gentrification is a slow process that takes many years, but just an idea right now of bringing in new things that kind of looks like. So the cons of it is higher rent for lower income residents. This happens through new economic class coming into these neighborhoods and the new retail chains coming in, facilities, parks and recreation, new rent prices go up. So this turn creates fewer racial minorities in these neighborhoods who have had this cultural connection to many of them for long times. And displacement of lower income residents disperses them and pushes them out because they can't afford this, any, this neighborhood anymore. What this does is change the culture of the neighborhood from what it used to look like to what it is looking like now. And this is also due to retail chains such as Walgreens and Starbucks coming in on every many corners. So like I said, the higher rent flux and higher rent due to influx of new businesses comes into play have a higher medium income, we have restoration of new buildings done by urban pioneers and investors who are trying to take this neighborhood, fix it up, and make something new and progressive over it. That's the intended idea. You also have small business versus big business. You have a small coffee shop that's been there for a long time versus the new Starbucks coming in. Starbucks is more attractive for many people coming into these new neighborhoods as opposed to the small coffee shop. It's been there for a long time. Higher rent, Starbucks might be able to pay that a lot easier than 
those who used to live there were being let out. Just a fiction, more big business coming in, such as Target. So this is Wicker Park. How many of you, by a show of hands, have been down to Wicker Park before? Okay, so you're all familiar with the area. It's fun, it's lively, it's hip and happening. Um, it wasn't always like that. It was strong Polish and Latino neighborhood up through the 70s. It was like Polish language spoken throughout. And Around the 60s and 70s, city population started to drop by 11%. This is what they called the white flight. During areas when people were just coming to cities to work and they were moving out towards the suburbs. Wicker Park was once regarded as a gang hotspot for the Latin Kings. Yet in the 1980s, there was a boom with artists and young professionals coming to this neighborhood for its gritty charm, like I was mentioning earlier. And they wanted to use the loft spaces there. And with that, the flux of new business started to merge, and now you have new shops all around. And now it is regarded as one of the hippest US neighborhoods by Forbes. There's also such neighborhoods like Mission District in San Francisco, or Brooklyn, New York, which are also going through and have been going through gentrification. So what I'm trying to say is where we go from here need for investment in culture has served neighborhoods. However, and as I mentioned with the pros and cons, there's also a need for parks and recreation. Bike lanes and playgrounds should not make people who have been living there move out. It should provide everything for outside of social class. Importance here is become part of the community and understand what is going on, where to go. I chose Wicker Park just because I felt like it would be the most recognizable one. I mean, Chicago is, I'm not going to lie, the most segregated city in the country. It's, I mean, there's, that's why I mentioned like so much cultural history in it. And the problem with this is bringing in new cultures, like I said, the Pilsen is a historically Hispanic neighborhood and new business coming in, there's been upset over that, people having to move out. But it goes throughout the whole entire country. Yeah? Is there any kind of noticeable pattern of what kinds of people would come in versus like start the gentrification process? Um, basically, like I was saying, like young urban pioneers, they call them, more noticed as the hipsters. So coming in setting up new shops, that's how it's usually recognized. But um, young wealthy families as well. Um, these kind of locations over the span of time become noticed because they're lower rent compared to some areas such as Lincoln Park, but they still offer like this like charm and city life and still have places to go as well. A new culture emerges. Okay. Thank you.